Hello guys, okay, so today we're talking about 825 wigs and 826 wiglets. Okay, so a wig is basically any artificial hair coloring that gives you, that's, you take care of this from webs and you weave it into a cap and it gives you 100% coverage. So a wig should have 100% coverage of that person's head. Now there's many reasons people wear wigs. One reason is due to alopecia, which is the loss of hair. Um, and then other people just wear wigs because they want different hairstyles without having to damage their own hair. And this is a wonderful thing to do. And I have many clients that just wear wigs because they want to wear wigs. You know, it's a fun thing for them to do. And they get a new hairstyle, a new look without having to cut theirs or lose the long hair they have, or maybe they can't grow long hair and they want long hair for an evening, but they don't want to deal with long hair all the time. And a wiglet is more of a small piece of hair that can be interwoven into the hair to make it look fuller or like a toupee, which is what you'll also see there. And we'll go through that in a little bit more. Now, human hair versus synthetic hair. Okay, human hair, of course, comes from a human, which synthetic is made out of synthetic fibers. Now, when you're purchasing human hair versus synthetic hair, the advantages of human hair is it can be styled. It can take heat. It can be washed with a gentle shampoo and put back, you know, and, and restyled into a new form, whereas synthetic hair cannot, cannot take heat. So, you know, that's a, that's a big thing. So if we look at this video here. Real human hair. This is human hair. It will burn and it has a distinct odor to it. When you burn it, it smells like barbecue? I wouldn't go as far as barbecue. It, it actually stinks. Off. And then it crumbles and turns to ash. Because it has synthetic protein. Hair. Remember, synthetic hair is just plastic, so it just basically melts away. Watch it just shrivel up. It just smells like plastic. So you see, that's the difference between real human hair and synthetic hair. Let's start with... Okay, so that's how you identify human hair versus synthetic hair. Synthetic hair cannot take heat, so when you buy a synthetic wig, the advantages are you never really have to style it because it's always in that style. Never go, never leaves that style. Will always be forever in that style. Versus a human hair, you'd still have to style it to where you want it to be. Um, uh, but there again, if you want, you know, synthetic hair, that's the only style it's ever going to be because you cannot restyle it. Okay, so that's a big disadvantage of it. Um, human hair will definitely get off that distinct odor when it's burnt, just like you saw. And um, hin human hair looks more realistic. Um, it's usually more durable and you, like I said, you can style it. Versus the disadvantages, our human hair reacts to climate just like your regular hair does. So if it's humid, it could get frizzy. You're gonna need to use product in it. Um, you need to always reset the hair after you shampoo it and the color will oxidize, meaning that eventually that color is gonna fade out of that wig and you may have to recolor the wig if you wanted a certain color. And then human hair can also, just like regular hair, have split ends and um, break off and so forth. So advantages of a synthetic wig are basically kind of the same. They're always gonna be, the technology is always great, so it's always gonna be beautiful. Um, it's always going to be in that same style. Um, it's cheaper than human hair, so you can buy a lot more with your money. And um, most of your synthetic wigs are typically always cut in the latest trends. Okay, so you can purchase a synthetic wig and it's good to go. Versus the disadvantages is synthetic hair looks um, very fake sometimes. It's very shiny. Um, although very beautiful, it's still very shiny. You can tell it's not synthetic hair. Um, synthetic hair cannot be exposed to heat or it will melt because it's like a plastic. It has plastic synthetic fibers in there. And um, the color 
on synthetic hair, it will not take color. So you really cannot even do color on synthetic hair, okay? So we can see there's a many different types of wigs, like right here would be your synthetic hair. This is very shiny versus look how beautiful this hair is. Look how beautiful this hair is. These hair would probably be more of a um, human hair and it looks very natural and realistic versus these are very fun. But again, they don't look realistic. Okay, but they are fun to have and to use. Okay, so let's move on and we're going to talk about quality of cost. Now, quality of cost, now prices are going to vary for different types of wigs, but human hair is going to be at the top of the line. It's going to cost more and typically um, European hair is going to cost the most. Okay, um, virgin hair is the most costly as well and hair from India and Asia are typically the most, I would say, probably the most prevalent. I'd say India and Asia is where you get most of your hair from, but um, typically your European hair is going to be the most costly. Now, human hair sometimes gets mixed in with human hair. I mean, animal hair, excuse me. Human hair sometimes in wigs gets mixed in with animal hair. And you'll see many different animals like angoras, horse, yaks, and sheep. Now the yak hair is prevalent because it's taken from the belly of the yak, which is the purest and the whitest so that it can be um, actually put into wigs and change the color up very simply. Okay, so that's, you'll see that. Um, and you can use a lot of different fantasy colors. Now the types of wigs are usually done in cap and capless. The difference is a capped wig is there's about five or more different types of caps and construction of caps that can be made. These are quite warm when they're worn so they can get uh, you know a little cumbersome and so forth but these are cap and then these are typically hand woven and made uh, with wefts of hair. Um, now, a weft of hair is going to look like this right here. And these will be sewn into these caps. Now, a capless wig is a wig that was sewn in by a machine. Okay, they take the wefts of hair and sew them right into the machine. There's hand tied versus knotted, and the hand tied wigs are made um, by inserting individual strands into the foundation of that of that cap and then knotting them with a needle. Now these wigs are very natural looking and they are wonderful for styling versus machine made wigs, um, the least expensive option because they're made in mass quantity. And these wigs are made by feeding wefts of hair into a machine and then that machine will form a base for them and put them together. Now you also have um, what we call toupees. Toupees are just small wiglets basically and they can look very realistic and sometimes they can look not so realistic. Um, like here, depending on the style of cut you have, this is a toupee that's worn and it can be put in so that it looks very much like that person's hair. Um, same thing over here, very realistic, very nice. You can coordinate the colors. Um, here, very nice. They're not so realistic. Um, that would probably, you know, you need a different one. And right here, very realistic, looks real. Typically, they have a glue they can glue this down with. And some of these look so real, you would never be able to tell. Like looking at his cut, you'd never be able to tell because they match the hair so nice. Whereas some wiglets look, um, or toupees look very, very unnatural and you can say okay your hair doesn't even match it's not the same color um, so you have to be careful about when you're doing that because you want it to look realistic it would be better to be bald than to walk around looking like you're wearing a toupee because it doesn't look realistic or just go to a full-blown wig which would even be better um, so the ways that you can prepare hair is number one, you can do pin curls all over the head. So, and then another way that you can prepare hair 
um, for wearing wig is to actually do a hair wrap, which you learned in first year, and wrap the hair all the way around the head so it's tight. And then you want to make sure you pin that wig down very, um, very good because you get some strong winds in Chicago. It can lift that wig right off your head. And so you want to make sure that that wig is on there for good and stays. So you have to pin it down very well with bobby pins all the way around. And you want to make sure that you have 100 percent coverage of that wig. Um, clients will sometimes purchase wigs and bring them to style. So make sure that you are having that wig on them exactly where they want it when you cut it. Some people do use blocks, which looks like a, a head, but it's actually a very heavy um, block that you can pin the wig down and then cut it to where the client would like it, okay? Um, when you're going to clean a wig, make sure that you're using a very gentle shampoo and typically you will just let it dry naturally. Um, you can use a hair dryer if you want to on a real human hair, but you don't have to. Um, but, you know, you do deal with frizz when you're not. Um, and that is, I think, about all that we got to cover with wigs and wiglets. Very small piece, a very small chapter there, but important to know because that could possibly be on your test. And everything we went over on this info sheet is going to be in your Schoology. So when you go to semester two, week 17, Thursday, You'll see the wig kahoot that you need to practice and play tonight because you'll have a test tomorrow. And then you'll also have the 825 style of wig info sheet there that you can study. Okay, guys. So this has been 825 wigs and wiglets. Have a great one.